Hey, good morning, and welcome back to the channel. This is John at Havoc Maker Studio, and it's been a hot minute since I've been on, uh, well, on YouTube. Uh, I've taken a couple weeks off, uh, but I've been productive. Um, as many as you know, I have been writing an RPG and writing a companion novel to go along with it. Um, so I've been busy, um, and it's kind of hard to see, but... I got about 200 pages, uh, a little bit over 200 pages of just core material done minus all the fluff and everything else that kind of goes along with it, which actually I'm getting close to my goal of approximately 350 pages for the RPG, which now that things are kind of progressing along very splendidly, um, we're probably going to uh, exceed that 350 page limit which is actually really good because that just uh, that's more that's more content for uh, the end users that's all of you and hopefully by the end of August which I'm only uh, approximately minus some uh, kind of fluff lore background stuff I am uh, about 50 to 70 thousand words which sounds like a lot but as long as I keep on my novel writing pace of about 16, 1700 words a day, which translate to about three, three and a half pages a day, I should be done by the end of the month, uh, minus a little bit. And then we're going to go into play testing or uh, beta testing, play testing, beta testing. We're going to do some play testing starting September, probably through the end of the year and um, then uh, move on from there. Uh, we're pretty sure, or I'm pretty sure that the numbers are solid. I've actually had two mathematicians and one video game designer uh, look over the information and everything syncs up. It all looks good numerically, uh, mechanic-wise, the numbers are right. Um, there's little to no um, OP. I guess being overpowered if you take certain combinations and everything everything seems to be balanced which is what really what you want uh, so the only thing that's left is actually to sit down put it in the hand of players right <laughs> and let them go forth and try to break the game uh, so what does that have to do with today's video N nothing it's just a give you guys an update why I haven't been doing videos over the past two weeks. I wanted to get a large amount of work since I, I had a moment of um, inspiration and uh, drive. And if, the many of you know that I do have suffer from some PTSD issues. And so I go through some lulls of creativity. And well, the lull is coming. So that means I can kind of back off here a little bit and get back to doing some videos. Whew. Thanks for letting me get that out. Let's dive into some gaming news. So a lot has happened and I'm not going to get enough videos out today or even this week. Um, a lot of it's old news. Uh, we, there's some controversies at the Nova Open. I've already done a video for that. I'm not satisfied with the quality. So I pushed that off to the side. I'll redo it. Uh, Games Workshop still suffering. Um, there's a lot of those cracks that I've talked about you know, weeks and months ago, um, not necessarily with Games Workshop, but with the gaming community as a whole. That includes the tournament players, casual players and such. Those cracks are getting bigger and people are just getting worn out. So we're going to cover that, of course, because we get to talk about Games Workshop and Games Workshop's overstepping themselves again. Oh, it's going to be great. Um, but normally I cover a lot of Marvel Crisis Protocol stuff on this channel, almost, I would say, about 75%. And over the past few weeks, we've had numerous releases, but I haven't covered those because I already did cover them. Uh, during the the mini extravaganza last month, and the, all those releases are just now being um, released onto their uh, main website under the Atomic um, Mass Games or Atomic Mass Transmissions 
uh, the new Captain America, Arnim Zola, Baron Strucker, all those. So I'm not going to rehash those uh, since we've already covered it. There's no, there's no need to. So I didn't want to just kind of do, oh, it's just another video of what he's already covered. I hate that when that happens with other people. But I want to talk about my favorite game that I hate. <laughs> and um, I usually do them a, a bit of an injustice. Uh, well, actually, a lot of injustice. And it's actually, no, I do justice because of their injustice. Does that make sense? You know what? Let's just put it this way. <laughs> Privateer Press had a fantastic game called War Machine, then an, an alternate version, I guess you could call it, or a, a, a parallel game called Hordes. Uh, essentially, it's the same system with just some different um, uh, nomenclature and actually could cross over in some play. And first, uh, they, they had a fairly good game system. It wasn't for me um, any game where if you kill the leader and the game's over, and I'm, I'm simplifying this, but if you kill the leader and the game is just over, it could be happening like the first turn by chance then that's just not a game I want to play. I want If I'm going to be putting down all my awesome painted miniatures, um, I want to sit there and hopefully play to the, you know, the, the full duration or at least get halfway through a normal uh, game duration, even if it's only like three rounds or whatever, uh, say for four, like Warhammer 40,000 for reference, get through at least to turn three before I end up losing. And... Uh, so and I, so I've been critical of uh, War Machine and Hordes for that reason. Now War Machine and Hordes has some appeal to me, even though it's, uh, um, the historical fantasy uh, type of mentality that I have, I look at the construction of all their um, fantasy setting stuff, and I'm just like, this is ridiculous. This is so stupid. High, not even high fantasy. It's almost um, sci-fi fantasy. Um, I, I would even put that private or war machine is more sci-fi than it is a fantasy game. And, and some people are like, "Oh, but John, it's like steampunk." Ah, man, they've gone far beyond steampunk. It's like westernized. Final Fantasy or Fantasy Star Online from from Japan. That's how I look at it, and that's one of those, those other things besides the player base. The aesthetic has always kind of ruined it for me, and the gameplay. And I've been very very harsh with it, especially once the 3.0 edition came out and the hot mess that came out from 3.0, the beta all the way through the release of 3.0, um, the horrible behavior of upper echelon management and their spouses towards the, uh, the, the, the designers and their all the, all the employee, all the staff that actually breathed life into the game, which drove many, many, many people away. Um, but thankfully I'm kind of glad that they did because that's, partially how we got Marvel Crisis Protocol because some of the top talent was like, well, we're going to leave here. And now they're over at Atomic Mass Games doing Marvel Crisis Protocol, fixing Star Wars, which needed a big fix. It's been, you know, it's kind of like a, a, I don't know, double-edged blessing. I'm not sure if that's the correct terminology, but I'm definitely been happy about uh, Privateer Press imploding and driving away their top talent because that top talent went elsewhere and has made some really great strides in the tabletop gaming industry. Now, the one thing I don't like is to see a franchise, a game, a company, especially with employees, I don't necessarily want to see them fail and go under and people are unemployed because that is a horrible, horrible experience. So, Privateer Press has taken a couple years off. Well, they've, they've struggled over those years. 
But recently, and this is the good news, this is a very good news, even though I was a little, I'm, I'm still slamming on them. They have uh, come out with the Mark IV, that's the newest edition of War Machine. Now, I am not an expert in playing War Machine. I have, I am definitely a novice or an amateur. I have played games. I have learned how to play at, at events. I've got had enough people help walk me through. It just never stuck. So a lot of these new rules that um, we're going to show you, I'm not familiar with. So if you are an expert or you are a long time, long, uh, long time fan and uh, gamer for War Machine or Hordes or both, put it down in the comments what you think of the Mark for uh, rules i'm going to put a link in the description for the beta rules which they've done free online now what i do really want to talk about is the updates of what they are going to be doing so uh, they've updated and streamlined the rules right uh, there's going to be free digital rules and for the model statistics and the rules for playing uh, war machine there's all, all this stuff is going to be available also through an app, which I, I'm usually critical of, of apps, big companies putting apps out. Games Workshop has the worst app out there. The, the, uh, the Warhammer Plus app is just horrible. But on the flip side, we have like the Song of Ice and Fire uh, uh, app for that game. And it is a wonderful, wonderful tool. Really, really enjoy it. And from what we understand is that everything's going to be available free. The app is going to free. There will be a, pre, a paid service, but that paid service is to get their monthly magazine, which I forget what their monthly magazine is called, but it uh, has additional um, content not related to playing the game. Does that make sense? So all the related game material is going to be free, if everything that we've read so far is true, all the extra content, kind of like how Warhammer, um, the Warhammer Plus app has all that extra content that you're paying for, that's the kind of stuff you would get, except you're also paying for the rules. Well, actually, you're paying for the rules twice when I think about it with the Warhammer app, because you got to buy the books, right? And then you got to input the code from the physical book into the app to be able to use your purchased book that you have in the app. So you're really paying for it twice. Actually, you're paying to own the book and you're paying a rental fee for the book. That's an interesting way to look at it. Kudos Games Workshop on fleecing people out of their money. Anyway, so back to Privateer Press. So not only are they fixing up the rules and streamlining it, it and from what I from what I've been told by fans, uh, at least up here in Dallas, is that it looks like the game is a little bit faster, and a lot of the clunkiness, like if you guys remember the whole facing issue, um, you always had to be facing a certain way, and if you're not within um, those parameters, then, you know, you obviously can't target or do certain things that got fixed. Um, and a few other, um, lesser and major items we're not going to cover in this cause I want to do a nice compile, but I want to at least get this video out, uh, uh, right now. Uh, the other thing that is really interesting that they have done is they've talked about 3d printing and they are going down a routes where they are 3d printing high quality and if uh models using 3d printers and my guess is resin printers of course which helps save money for them and us it also helps um and for shipping because we now we don't have to wait for the slow boat from china for them and uh, everything is basically going to be done in-house so this right here saves them a metric F ton of money and can pass on the savings really to us and still give us quality miniatures. The other thing that I really like about what they're doing 
is allowing for the customization of their, uh, oh man, I can't think of the name, the Warjacks. Um, the Warjacks will have uh, multiple options in those boxes that they come in and those boxes, when, when they come to you, they're going to have magnets. So you can magnetize the frames of the Warjacks, swap out the different heads, swap out the different weapons. So you're not stuck going and um, kind of like, oh, I don't know, Games Workshop where you have to go buy, um, I don't know, a brand new Leviathan Dreadnought that's finally plastic. And then you have to go buy a, uh, you have to go buy separate weapon upgrade packs to get all of your options. Or in the heyday of, well, I want to have multiple weapon options, but I have to buy two Dreadnought kits, $60, $70, just so I can have all the weapon options. Games Workshop is really horrible about that. And from what we're seeing right now is Privateer Press has at least solved part of that problem. Is this going to be good in the future? We don't know because we're still in the early days of their roadmap. So let's take a look at this roadmap. Right now where we're at, um, well, now we're past by a couple days, is the battle group previews that went on at Gen Con. I'm waiting to get some more feedback from people that attended Gen Con and see what they thought about that. And then we'll cover that probably tomorrow. Um, they are recovering from the long drive and uh, going through their goodie bags <laughs> from uh, of all their stuff that they got while they were at Gen Con. Uh, so really cool stuff. I really wish I could have gone. At any rate, the first starter sets are going to be starting to drop sometime in October. And then by January of 2023, all the starter sets will be out. Now, there's good, by January, uh, the beginning of the first quarter of 2023, they are going to have released all four of the starter kits. Now, about the future or the what what year or how far in the um, timeline this game has advanced, I don't know. I don't know enough about the restructuring of the different factions. Uh, from what I understand, Signor... Um, Caldor, I'm, I'm probably butchering these names and I, I apologize. Uh, the one nation that came and white almost wiped out Signar, uh, I can't think, Ogrish or something like that. And then one other one, and it's probably on here staring me in the face and I, I'm, I'm not seeing it. At anyway, at any rate, they are going to be the first starter. So from what we're seeing is it looks like there's going to be an advancement to the storyline, which is great. There's just something you should definitely, definitely do, especially when it has an impact on what factions are available. Now, before we continue on with those factions, for the legacy players, people that have already spent hundreds and maybe even thousands of dollars on their massive uh, army from uh, all the way from Mark One to uh, Mark Three or First to Third Edition, they are going to be including legacy content rules. So you can still use your legacy um, uh, units. How that's going to interact with organized play, no idea yet. We haven't gotten a full, full um, press release on organized play, but I imagine that's going to probably not... My, my, my initial impression is going to be probably not included in most organized play. We'll probably see... Kind of like what uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol is doing right now. We have standard play, which is um, including everything but with some ban items. And then um, the, I think it's just open play uh, where you have everything is available. Or with Games Workshop, with Warmer 40,000, you've got the, the standard play and then you got the Legends line. Which you can put the include legends if that's the type of event you're wanting to run. So I imagine that's what's going to be, but that does mean that all of your legacy content, and even as you can see on the updates here, legacy content is going to be updated. So you'll still be able to play with your old stuff. And people will probably run legacy if it is a separate legacy and new content, um, organized events. My guess is that there will be those two type of events and people will play them. 
But I imagine a lot of those legacy players will just gradually slide over to the new play because that's where the action is going to be. That's where the events, the official events are going to be focused on. Probably organized play kits, if they are sending them out, are going to be focused on all of the new content versus the old. Not to push out the legacy because obviously they're updating all that. But that's the focus, which totally makes sense, especially if you are revamping your gaming system, you're revamping your model line, you're pushing the narrative of the story forward. You've got to focus on the future of your franchise, your business, rather than the past. But you can still, but they're still going to support the past. But the main focus, I would, I'm going to just say, 75% of their focus is going to be on the future or the present. Their current, <laughs> their current edition. All the legacy stuff will just be kind of uh, dragged along and you can still participate and still play and still enjoy it. But don't be surprised when you're just seeing the main focus being on the new content. And speaking of uh, beta rules, um, well, I already spoke about beta rules. I will leave the link for this in uh, the comments below. So give it a good um, read over. I want to take a look at some of the core armies. So the two of the first ones are the Orgoth Sea Raiders. I think these are the ones that this is kind of like the newest race uh, coming over or faction. They're the ones that attack Sig Signar and um, all sorts of really bad things happened story-wise. So right now, as you guys can see, uh, they've got two Warjacks that come in this starter box and includes over 30 magnetized customizations. Um, multiple heads, multiple arms, so you guys can sit there, and which I think is really a brilliant move. Probably one of the best moves I've seen in a company including magnetized components all within the same box. So you don't have to go out and buy uh, two war jacks so you can get all the, uh, all the different weapon options. Everything is going to be included there. And this, um, we'll, we'll double check to see what the price is, if they included a price, but this looks like a good starter set. Um, probably have one to two uh, war casters. I think that if I remember correctly, that's what they're called. You have a couple elite units, a couple troop units, and a couple war jacks. Um, so let's see if they. Oh yeah, for um, two hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. I don't know if they tell us what the point value of. Oh, it's a fifty point game, which uh, from my understanding they're doing fifty one hundred, or maybe it's twenty five fifty one hundred. They they're gonna have three levels of play. For two hundred dollars, you get your your start your your army, and you can play right out of the box. That's effing amazing. This is smart. This is smart marketing. Now the other one that we're going to be seeing is let's double check here is going to be the Signar Storm Legion box for two hundred bucks. You get your two um, war jacks with all the magnetized options. You get uh, two elite units. To I'm guessing troop units and a couple war casters or heroes. This is good. The, for two hundred dollars, this is actually I think a, a very good buy. Um, financially, I think you are saving probably thirty five to fifty dollars by doing this. Um, I, I'm trying to run through numbers through my head, but this is the future of War Machine um, and. I would say that with, with this new edition, this is it. If this fails, I think we will, by far and large, see the end of Privateer Press. This is a, a Hail Mary. It's a well-thrown Hail Mary. And I think um, the, it's going to be received well. God, I'm doing, I'm doing um, football references. I think it's going to be received well. And I think they're going to carry it to the goal line and it's going to be successful. But this is like the, the, the last quarter of the Super Bowl. And whether they're going to survive this or not, I think everything is going to ride on Mark IV. On not only on how well it's done, 
but how well it's received and making sure that all of the past issues no longer get uh, kind of spread throughout the company because they're internal problems plus the external problems really destroyed the company. And I think that's a shame. Um, I think the internal stuff that was going on was petty. For, mind you, it's all rumor-based, and I'm not going to repeat it here because I could be held liable. But a lot of those issues that they had internally that drove people away, that ruined the business, those um, people that were in positions of power and their spouses and, and whatnot that ruined it. Um, I'm hoping that either they got their act together and or they're just totally gone. And I'm hoping, even though I'm not a big fan of Privateer Press or War Machine, that I, I do hope that this is successful because I would hate to see an IP die out, uh, even one I'm not a big fan of, and uh, people lose out on getting their, their cool minis, getting their fun games, and people, of course, losing their jobs. Now, I will leave this off on one thing. They did say that Hordes, which is a companion game, will be rolled under the War Machine brand with comparable rules, models, and play environment modifications and updates. The games will no longer be sustained as different brands, uh, which is good. Um, they said sometime in 20, uh, the summer of 2023, which they're not showing on here, we will see the first of the hordes um, bl re-blending or blending into uh, just under the War Machine banner, which I think is really good, especially when you have two companion games um, that are only really separated just by some nomenclature. I think combining them into one big game is a really good idea because now you have multiple factions and, uh, and you don't have to worry about two different rule sets that are compatible but they're still slightly separate. So now everything's under one banner, one rule set, one, one rule set to rule them all. I'm hoping that this is really going to be a, um, a good, clean start for Privateer Press. I really hope so. And I really hope they, they learned from the many, 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 many mistakes of the past. And I'm hoping, I doubt it, but I'm hoping that those very... I hate using the term, those toxic players that helped um, push away this community and uh, helped contribute in a small part uh, to the downfall of War Machine and Hordes. I hope they've learned their lesson and will be supportive of this and not make those same mistakes that they did in the past. Hopefully there's some evolution that has gone on or some maturity amongst the company and the fans. The good fans, which is the vast majority, and that tiny percentage of really bad fans, those bad, um, those bad seeds. I'm hoping that everybody has matured enough that we can move forward and have a bright future for War Machine and Hordes. All right, guys, let me know what you guys think. If you've already read through the beta rules, uh, let me know what you think of this whole rebranding and all these great stuff that's going on with uh, Privateer Press and War Machine Mark IV. I really want to hear your comments on this. Um, I'm going to be reading over the rules and I might do another video going, hey, here's those rules. These are the big changes. What do you guys think? We might even do a live q and I'm not sure. We'll see how this works out. Anyways, I do want to hear from you guys. Please, 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 please. If you are a War Machine Hordes fan and you are excited about this or not excited, please put it in the comments below. Let me know what it is so I can go look it up and we can discuss it in the comments. I can do another video on it and so on and so forth. You guys have yourself a fantastic Wednesday. I'll chat with you later. See ya. Thank you.